Hi. Now in this video, what I want to show you is where we take an area trapped between two curves and spin that area 360 degrees about the x-axis. And what it does is it generates this particular volume of revolution. If I just turn it around a little, you should be able to see the kind of thing that we're looking at. Okay. Now, to generate the volume, what I did was to take an area enclosed between the curve y equals x squared divided by 8 and y equals the square root of x. And I took that area and revolved it about the x-axis. So it generated this kind of solid. I've just turned the axis slightly so you can just get a glimpse inside and I haven't finished the total volume of revolution just so that you could see this kind of section as it comes round. So on that basis what we're going to need to do is to consider just dropping let's say a dotted line from here onto the x-axis because we're going to build this solid up by considering the volume of revolution that we get when we revolve this solid, okay, that's going from this point of intersection of the curves to this point of the intersection. We'll revolve this round the x-axis. That will give us the outer kind of solid that we would generate. And from that, we're going to minus the inside volume when we look at the volume generated underneath this curve here, y equals x squared upon 8 between here and here. So we need to build this up then by saying that this volume here is equal to this volume, which we'll call, say, v1. And from this, we need to subtract this volume which we'll call V2. Okay? Right, now, to work out our limits, we just need to find out where these two curves intersect. So that's the first thing that we're going to need to do. We'll just uh, put up here a little subtitle, intersection. And uh, if we're going to work out that intersection, we're going to need to equate our two equations together. So we've got x squared then divided by 8 equals the root of x. And if I multiply both sides, say, by 8, we get, therefore, x squared equals 8 root x. And then I think it would be best just to square both sides next. So if we do that, we therefore have x to the power 4 equals 64x. And with this, if we now just subtract 64x from both sides, we're therefore going to have x to the power 4 minus 64x equals 0. Factorize this, pull out x, and you're going to have x bracket x cubed minus 64, and that's going to equal 0. So clearly, x is going to equal 0, or x cubed minus 64 is going to equal 0. If I was to add 64 to both sides, then that would give me x cubed equals 64. And so to get x, we've got x equals 0 from this one, but to get x here, we just need to take the cube root of 64, and that's going to be 4. So we've got our points here the origin, and this point here is going to have an x-coordinate of 4. So that's going to be our limits then, okay? So let's just start to work out these volumes. Well, for the volume V1, okay, it's equal to pi times the integral of y squared integrated with respect to x. And we're dealing with integrating with respect to x, so we need limits with respect to x. And that's going to be going from 0 to 4. 
And for this one, if we square our y, we're just going to have x. So we've got pi times the integral of x with respect to x going between 0 and 4. And in the usual way, if we integrate this, if we integrate x with respect to x, it's going to be x squared over 2. I'm going to put the 2 out here though, because it's a constant. Don't have to do that, but I think it does simplify the problem. Okay, now we substitute our limits in, and for this we've got the pi over 2 at the front, and then we've got 4 squared, which is 16, minus and 0 squared, which is 0. So we've got 16 pi over 2, which is really going to reduce to 8 pi. 8 pi, and we'll put units cubed, because we're dealing with the volume there. Okay, so uh, what we need to do now is work out our next volume, V2. So for V2, going to be much the same kind of idea. Pi times the integral, going from 0 to 4 then, of y squared with respect to x. Okay, our standard formula then for working out volume of revolution about the x-axis. So we're going to have pi integral from 0 to 4. And y squared now is going to be x to the power 4 divided by 64. I'm going to put the 64 out the front and we'll just have x to the power 4 here and we're integrating that with respect to x. Now if I integrate x to the power 4 with respect to x it's going to be x to the power 5 over 5. And 5 times 64 is 320. So what we've got here is pi divided by 320. And that's going to be x to the power 5 going from 0 to 4. And again, if we put our values in here, we're going to have pi over 320 and then 4 to the power 5. Well, that's 1024. Subtract 0 to the power 5, well, that's 0. And so we've got really 1024 pi over 320. And that will reduce down to 16 pi over 5. And again, being a volume, let's just say that's units cubed. So to get the final volume, we'll just put therefore the volume, okay, equals, and all we need to do is just subtract this volume from this one. I'll just write 8 pi then minus 16 pi over 5. If you do that sum, you'll find you get 24 fifths pi, or 24 pi over 5. And again, we'll just put that, because it's a volume, units cubed. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then of how to do this kind of question.